In the age of communication, everyone loves to talk, just as TEDx is also an opportunity, a stage for people who love to express themselves. But how much value this stage has depends on you, the audience, the listener. So listen to me. I come from China, and I'm very fortunate to have the chance to learn abroad and receive a diverse education. In my opinion, intercultural communication is my social responsibility as an international student. It allows people in the global village to understand each other better and bring people closer. However, cultural exchange is never the same as cultural output. Speaking alone, not listening, does not constitute communication. I have come to Germany to attend high school for more than one year. Both in and out of school, I often hear discussions about China. With its rapid development, China is often praised and complimented, but more often, it is criticized and questioned. Like me, many Chinese students are really concerned about other people's views on China because Chinese people want to be friends with people from all over the world. Faced with doubts and criticisms, gradually I found that rather than rushing to respond to these opinions or argue immediately with some racists, quietly listening to criticism first makes me more powerful. After listening to criticism, I began to reflect on myself. Having looked at many media reports, I realized that China's environmental pollution is a real and major problem. For instance, although in my hometown Nanjing, there are already regulations on waste sorting, not everyone is aware of it or realizes the necessity of this policy. I began to examine whether I had done a good job of waste sorting all the time and try my best to improve the environmental protection. I know that as far as I am concerned, in the bigger picture, nothing can be changed immediately. It takes time for the accumulation of knowledge, which does not happen overnight. In order to develop economy, bad phenomena such as environmental pollution are almost unavailable. But just because it happened in the past does not mean that we have not progressed, nor does it mean that we cannot change it in the future. Self-reflection brings changes. Ignoring the problem at hand simply blinds people to reality. Criticism, on the other hand, can bring people to progress. A truly civilized nation always listens to criticism and strives to improve itself whether rich or poor. Socrates said, the unexamined life is not worth living. This applies not only to individuals, but to countries as well. At the beginning of my studies abroad, I failed to understand why certain stereotypes of China persist. How should I react to them? After pondering, I came to understand that the history of China cannot be changed and should not be erased. The things that more than Chinese people should do is to turn criticism into motivation and redouble our efforts to improve ourselves and say no to unfair criticisms. Behind our generation of international students, a group of ordinary parents who recognize the importance of education. Instead of cradling children in their arms to, for the sake of their own happiness, they try their best to provide children a chance to see the world Therefore, we carry the expectations of our parents, absorbing the knowledge and culture from different countries, presenting the face of the East to the world, while at the same time suffering loneliness and even discrimination. When we encounter criticism, we should first listen and then try harder to improve. I know that efforts do not necessarily mean success of changing stereotypes. However, changing bad impression is impossible without hard work. So that we need to try a little bit harder. We can not only fight against discrimination after listening to them. Without listening to criticism, we are even not know that some critical comments are actually discriminatory so that we won't stand up and fight against it. 
criticism can also lead, to us, lead us to a mutual understanding. Let me share with you my experience in a host family. During the holiday at lunch, my co-host mother asked me about eating habits in China. Looking at cold bread and potato salad, I said that Chinese people always eat, eat warm food for three meals a day. She was shocked and bluntly commented that this was a waste of time. Afterwards, when she finished her meal and brought the bas um, basket back to the kitchen, I overheard her say, making one meal requires hours. Is there really nothing else to do better than cook all day long in the kitchen? Moreover, based on her vi recent visit to a Chinese restaurant in Germany, she also expressed that Chinese food are a pile of high, heavy seasonings and unhealthy food. In order to change her subjective evaluation, I vividly described my favorite Chinese food, but this didn't seem to change her mind. All I saw was an awkward but polite smile. With doubts about Chinese food, I decided to cook for my host family, even though I didn't have ex extensive experience in the kitchen at home. I went to an Asian supermarket to buy some ingredients, called my grandma to consult cooking methods, and also follow some online cooking tutorials. One evening, I made quickly a few dishes for the host family. After the meal, my host mother said to me that she not only thought that Chinese food was pretty delicious, but also felt the enthusiasm and warmth of Chinese people through the food. Having faced doubts about Chinese food, I strengthened the communication with my host family. From another perspective, these criticisms and doubts are also a warning for me. As the most influential Chinese philosopher Confucius said, don't do unto others what you don't want others to do unto you. Since I really suffer this unpleasant frustration after being criticized, I am more tolerant and respectful of a variety of traditions. Before spouting critical or ironic com comments, I try to seek the truth and know more first. In an international family like Salem, with students from about 40 countries, listening to how people from different cultural, social, and political backgrounds see the world, even if it is super critical, always gives me a special perspective and a different way of thinking. So students like me listen to criticism and learn from them. On the other hand, having experienced such injustice, I also want to encourage everybody to think twice before criticizing others. Last year, in February, I did an internship in Heidelberg. It was almost a perfect time, except one thing. One weekend, as I was walking along the NACA, I met three teenagers. They approached me and shouted, you coronavirus, get out of our country. The fact is, tolerance is not justice. It isn't a sufficient description of the world we want. Resist. Listen to unfair criticism of yourself. I'm certain that you will feel very uncomfortable. So stop discriminating. Your acts really hurt a lot of people. Since last year, the coronavirus pandemic influences everybody's life. Hopefully, the criticism that the epidemic has generated all around the world accelerates the pace of improving medical systems and social governance. The severe epidemic that the world is experiencing will eventually be history. I hope that when future generations look back on today, they are able to praise us that we did not stop at the face of complaining. We are not defeated by the setbacks. Instead of that, all of us break the boundaries of nations, religions, and so on. We come together to listen to criticism and learn from bad experience from the last year so that we can improve measures and do our utmost to prevent further spread of the virus. I also sincerely wish that this outbreak will serve as a warning to the world to avoid similar disasters in the future. Dealing with criticism positively is an important life skill. The first step of dealing with it is listening. Let's listen to criticism and have power. 
I wish all of you all the best and have a better year than the last one. Thank you.